attorney Clint Paris, and you're listening live to In Touch News Radio, Reality Radio, where everybody can be a star. And this is straight up the middle. You know what that means? I lean into the left because the good professor Tony Seabrook is uh, out uh, educating today's youths, uh, molding their minds, hopefully in the right way. But when he's away, for some odd reason, we typically tend to swerve off to the left a little bit. Hey, not my fault. If you don't like it, guess what you can do? You can jump on the phone line and call in at 888-444-9588, and you can straighten me out. Make sure I keep it down in the middle. Otherwise, my opinions may lean a little bit to the left. But I'm happy to be back, everybody. Uh, last week, uh, I was out um, returning my son to college. Uh, you know, he's embarking on his education just uh uh, you know, just really an exciting time, and I'm hoping that 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 turns out well, and he's fulfilled in that endeavor. And 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 for all of you all who have kids that are back in school, hopefully things are going well. You're keeping uh, them safe, and everybody's getting settled into the, this year's academic routine. And on cue, uh, as nature would have it, guess what? We get a little storm blowing in. So. Uh, something else to factor into what you're trying to figure out. So hopefully everybody's staying safe. Hopefully you prepared yourself. I don't want to hear this. It's not coming my way, and I'm not ready. Go ahead and get ready. If it doesn't come your way, keep the soup in the cabinet. You can eat it later. The ice, you can use that. The water, you'll drink it. And I know you will drive up all that gas you put in your car. But just don't get caught without the things that you need in case a storm comes this way. So we're excited this week to be back on the air. And I'm most excited because I've got a, a, a guest co-host in studio with me. Uh, her name is uh, Attorney Teresa Jean-Pierre Coy. Good morning, Teresa. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning, Clint. Thank you for saying my name. Yeah, <laughs> I've been that. working on it. No, I'm happy to have you here. I know that um, uh, you know you've uh, you're you're well accomplished. You've done some great stuff in our community. Um, but can I tell you know what made you ever start out? I know I have my own story. Wanting to be a lawyer. Well, it's it's a funny story, but I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and um, in the '80s, and during that time. Right. Um, you know, law shows were not shows, but movies dealing with lawyers was always a big thing. Like, like name one, like name a show. I, yeah. I can't even think of it, but I just remember mergers and acquisitions. I remember that term, and okay. I used to be a little girl, black girl, walking around, and people would say, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" And I'm like, right. "I want to be a lawyer, and I want to practice mergers and acquisitions." Oh wow! I had okay. no <laughs> idea what it meant, you know, because this was like movies about the stock market and lawyers. Uh -huh. and so I always said merge. It sounded like something that people made a lot of money in. Uh -huh. And so I just, I always said that. And so um, I still don't know what exactly lawyers who practice mergers and acquisitions do, but obviously I have not done that. Um, but I knew I didn't want to go into the medical field. Um, I'm Haitian American and, you know, a lot of times. Um, you said, I mean, what, what does that mean? Well, I mean, in our culture, a, a lot of a lot of parents, you know, they, they want, and not all of them, but they, you know, they ascribe to be doctors and, and nurses. And I just knew that I could not deal with blood or anything. I okay. knew I wanted to do something more than just high school right. um and so you know always hear you know dentist doctor lawyer and so i said lawyer i could do that yeah so I stuck I, with I, it. and i think that's not common in most cultures i can't think of a society where you go where um doctors and lawyers aren't at the top of the heap you know some communities you go you may find that they lean maybe to education or they mean to lean towards religion um but i can't think of a, a place where when people are in need Lawyers are not at the top of their list. I guess in doctors too, because right. you're sick, you're gonna, you're gonna, you, you, you're going to need a. So you, you, you come from Brooklyn and you end up going to Stetson College of Law, correct? Yes. Over now. now, tell Florida me, Florida A and M University first, though. So I am Florida. a rattler. Okay, did you go from Brooklyn to FAMU? No, I went from Brooklyn to Palm Beach, Florida, for my last year and a half so of high school. Okay, I met a guidance counselor who went to FAMU, took me to one. Um, homecoming game and I was hooked. I was like, oh, this is the place I need to be. So I graduated and I went to Florida A&M, went to Stetson on a half scholarship and okay. met my husband who's from Tampa, Florida and here I am. Oh, wow. Okay, then. So listen, if you were wondering, she is married, so you can strike that off the list right <laughs> there. Happily married, judging happily, by that smile. <laughs> happily, very happily. Well, that, that is good to hear. So, so Stetson, so tell me about your experience because cause Stetson just went, went back into into session, correct? They did. They started school this week. Um, I'm actually going to be teaching um, trial advocacy 
um, at Stetson. Okay. Um, now, what, what's trial advocacy for the non-lawyer crowd? Trial advocacy is where I will teach up-and-coming lawyers how to present themselves in court, how to right. try a case, how to best represent their clients um, in whatever scenario they may find themselves when they graduate, whether it be criminal, civil, but how to actually try a case and help their clients. Right. Now, now for those of you who are listening out there who've already got your computer up and you're already typing saying, well, what about the stats? And let me tell you something about stats. And click on U.S. News, War Reports, Advocacy Rankings. And what you're going to find is Stetson is number one. And it has been number one for, I want to say, at least in the last 23 of 25 years. Let me say that. As long as anybody want to count, we've been, we're, we're, we're bigger than the Duke in basketball. When it yeah. comes, I, and I say we because I am also a Stetson graduate. So congratulations Thank on you. the teaching. Now you teach Thank at you. two law schools, don't you? I, I Goodness do. gracious. Um, so I'll be teaching trial advocacy at Stetson and I will also be teaching um, negotiation skills at okay. Cooley Law School in Riverview. So right. I've got a busy, busy semester up ahead of me. Well, the best thing though is, is the, the willingness to give and contribute back to others. Uh, that's a big deal. And so uh, so I invited you in to co-host the video. So let me just give you the lay of the landscape. So okay. straight up the middle is supposed to be uh, political and current topics down the middle. And the way we keep it down the middle is usually Anth Professor Anthony Seabrook is here, who is, I won't say he's right wing, but he's off on the right somewhere. And some people just say he's off, but I'm just going to say he's <laughs> off on the right. He's relatively conservative, and, and, and it's great listening to him talk about the ideals of conservatism. I don't see them in a lot of what we have going on in our society, but we, we that way. And I usually bring a very um, compassionate, I call it liberal compassionate approach to looking at things, not from where I sit, but from where people in need sit. And, and that's a struggle I think a lot of us have. We often want to look at things from where we sit. And really, if you're going to help people, you got to be able to see things from where they sit. And, and people in need need us to be very conscious of what they're going through, what they're experiencing. So we're going to go through a few topics and talk about a few things this morning that I, and see what I can get your response to them. You know, see, just got to see where you're at. One of the things I want to find out is, is on a political uh, escape is it looks like Kamala Harris, her numbers have been going down. Right. And it, I almost feel like there's an effort to almost write her off at this stage of the election. Is, is that what you're, you're seeing as well? I, I think that is, um, that's exactly what I'm seeing. Um, I will have to let you know that I have not been paying attention for the last oh, few you're perfect. weeks. That's great I've then. been busy. Because we <laughs> want visceral internal reactions to what's happening. I think they've got her down at 7%. Wow. At one point in time, she was in the double digits. But her, her numbers have dropped significantly since she took on Joe Biden, uh, you know, about the whole busing situation. Uh, but her numbers have dropped. And I get I get the feeling, though, that there's this impetus to try to try to write her off a little bit early. And that, that that's one of the things I was concerned about. Also, I'm watching this close, and I know I, I've got a listener out there who's a Joe Biden guy uh, that always calls in and talks. But, man, Elizabeth Warren, she keeps climbing in the polls. She is climbing. I love her slogan, I've got a plan for that. Whenever somebody asks, she says, I've got a plan for that. And she's rolled out a, a number of plan, plans. But but what does it mean to you as a woman seeing so many women in the in the race and seeing one like her who's starting to make strides forward in the campaign. I mean, I, it, it's amazing to see, um, especially as a woman, obviously with the last election, I know a lot of women were behind Hillary Clinton. I don't think Elizabeth Warren is anything like that. Um, but I think it's, it's refreshing to see a woman, um, you know, coming up, especially after what we've been through. I hate to say it, what we've been through. Well, what do you mean by what we've been? Well, I mean, I, the last few through. years um, of, of our political climate, I think okay. it's a refreshing to see a woman um, just, you know, just at the top. Um, I, 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 I'm here for it. I love it. I have not made um, a decision as to where I'm going yet. I'm still trying to see what's where the dust settles. Before Correct. making that, but I, I think am that's open. Most people. Yeah, I think I'm open to hearing about everything, and it's unfortunate about you know Kamala Harris. She's an accomplished woman, an African American woman. Um, yeah, I think what really hurt her was probably her time as a prosecutor. Mm -hmm. um, it seems that's what I've heard a lot of. I don't think that you know that should have any you know. 
not say any bearing. I think people should obviously challenge her record and challenge the things that she's done, but I don't think that's a reason to write her off completely. Right, so right. it's sad to see her, you know, going down in the polls. Um, hopefully that can turn around and we can get her back yeah, again. It, it used to be there were no polls at this time because people didn't get in the race at this stage. It's just a different, you know, different election. You know, a, a complete different uh um, complete different, you know, way that it, politics is just changing. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be like regular youth sports year round, and I mean, just you just run, you know, constantly for office. Uh, the last thing I want to point to talk, touch on real quick before we take a quick break politically is Joe Biden. I feel bad for Joe because I, you know, I've got some some older members at my church, and I find myself sometimes re-explaining things. Are they re-explaining things? I'm trying to find out that they hear me. Oh, did you forget I just told you that? You know, those kinds of things. And I look at Joe and I wonder, is there any merit to this idea that he's kind of losing it? Because he had another big gaffe. Uh, to which telling a story and they can't match up the facts and he comes out and says well whether it was here or there it happened so it doesn't matter but what are your thoughts about these attacks on his mental state at this point I, I don't I think I think Joe Biden is fully aware he knows what's going on and I just think that that's just the personality that he has he's always been that way he's been a, a what's the word a gaff. <laughs> or uh, I mean, um, but I mean that that's just his his personality. So I don't know the specifics about that story. I know I read it real quick when I was right. on the internet. But um, I you know I I, I feel bad for Joe. I really do. <laughs> I think I think he I mean I don't know him personally obviously but right. he seems like a genuinely nice great guy and I think he's just so. ca- I mean but when you when you're when you're trying to get into this particular position right, right. everything is <laughs> under a microscope so all right well we got to take a break pay some bills uh this is Intex News Radio Reality Radio when we come back we're going to slide over hey guess what everybody in case you didn't know we're celebrating the 400th anniversary of slavery starting in the United States. And we're going to go over a couple other things, talk about Puerto Rico and Trump and who got a lot of stuff to talk to. So uh, and also talk about stand your ground and impact on politics in Touch news radio, reality radio, where you, too, can be a star. Ray Williams Funeral Home, providing the highest quality, professional, and caring service for your family. Call Jeffrey Rhodes at 813-253-3419. That's 813-253-3419. Or visit him at 301 North Howard Avenue, Tampa, Florida. Ray Williams Funeral Home, for the finest care and quality service. This is Dr. Veronica Walters, also known as Dr. V, the head of school at the Walters Academy for Entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call The Way, where we're educating today's youthpreneurs to be tomorrow's billionaires through social entrepreneurship. Do you have a student who's bored, frustrated, gifted, inquisitive, creative, business-minded? Then maybe you need to check The Way out. Listen, we have an educational platform that allows for individualized instruction. It's strength-based project-based, and designed to help your students become the absolute best they can while starting their own business and being an entrepreneur. If you're looking for something different and you need to find a more excellent way, then you need to visit us at The Way. That's The Way, www.thewaetampa.org. Or you can call us at 813-603-7923. We look forward to showing your students a more excellent way at The Way. In Touch Radio, where you can listen to a cruising flow of smooth soul and jazz. Today's R&B, a fun touch of hip-hop and gospel. All my music on one station. Giving you a buffet of music, news, and entertainment. We're In Touch Radio. Back at you, Esteban. All right, we're back live on Intex News Radio, reality radio, where everybody can be a star. If you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook, um, if you're not, go to the Intex News uh, uh, Radio 
click on whatever you click on there. You do any searches, In Touch News, <laughs> you'll land there. Go to YouTube. You can watch us live. You can watch us live also on In Touch News uh, Facebook page as well. And you're going to see sitting next to me on my right, Attorney Teresa Jean Pierre Coy with the Jean Pierre Coy Law Firm. Good morning, Good Teresa. Morning. How you Good doing? Morning. So tell me a little bit about the firm. How long have you had this firm in existence? I assume it's your firm. And tell us a little bit about what you guys do over there. This December, I will celebrate 10 years with this firm. So 10? Whoa. 10 years, yeah. Wow, that was fast. Yeah, it was fast. I remember the other day you were graduating law school. Right, right. So <laughs> 10 years of having my own firm. Um, and April of next year will be 15 years as a practicing attorney. So, um, you know, it has been a... a a wonderful experience. Um, it is my firm. I mainly practice criminal defense and personal injury, um, and I enjoy what I do. I'm passionate about it, and you know, it's right. it's wonderful. Now, at one point, I thought you did a lot more family law, correct? Well, I no, not a lot. <laughs> Because I get calls for family all the time. Right. First, a lot of people do. Right, when I first started my practice, obviously starting a practice, you, you're trying to figure out where you're going to get you do money light, from. You do light law. You do every law. Light law <laughs> that keeps the lights on. Right. And right. so I had the opportunity to do family law. Right. I enjoyed it for a time, but I quickly realized that my experience and my passion is primarily for criminal defendants um, and personal injury victims. Um, and family law, while I'm able to practice it, I tend to stay away from it, um, and I refer those to very competent attorneys in the community. Right, so we're going to come back and talk about that defense. But let me ask a quick, because people always ask this question. How can you get people off when they're guilty and go home and sleep? Well, one, I don't get everybody off, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> And then for me, it's not about getting people off or it, it, that's not what it's about. My sole purpose and my passion is to make sure that when the government charges a person, right. any person with a crime, that the government comes correct. If you're going to take away somebody's life, liberty or anything, I need to make sure that the government is held accountable and that mm. they prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt. And that's not all I do. Most of my cases don't end up in trial. Right. Um, I also make sure that police officers have followed what they need to follow, that they Correct. treat people the way they're supposed to treat them. Right. I make sure that the judges are being unbiased when they're dealing with defendants. So as a defense attorney, it, it's I don't just get people off. I make right. sure that the system does what the system is supposed to do, right. regardless of a person's race or or anything else that that is absolutely one of the things i think most people lose within the in the justice system is that it's about balancing the scale and making sure um it is applied the way that it's supposed to to apply to people um let me ask you about so you're you're an entrepreneur so having a law firm people think oh yes but you got to run that firm it's a business so tell me what what was what, what are one of the things that that are like one of your ahas about like ahas about being in your own firm like Man, I, I didn't anticipate this. This is a really a shocking surprise, good or bad, to having my own firm. Listen, and, and I mentor a lot of young lawyers who want to open their firms. Having your own firm is 90% business and 10% law. <laughs> And, and the problem is law school doesn't really teach you the business side. So uh -huh. what really surprised me, and it's still even a struggle for me now, is having the business part of it. Right. You know, growing up in the family I grew uh -huh. up, we didn't have businesses. We didn't own right. businesses. So, you know, I still have to try to... Right. Hold, carry a business and, and, and pay absolutely. Uncle Sam and yeah. pay my secretary. Right. And <laughs> so uh, um, let's it's bring a that, lot. Let's bring that call in, Esteban. Good morning. This is uh, In Touch News Radio, Reality Radio. You're on straight up the middle. Caller, uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Colleen Daniels. Good morning, Colleen. How are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. If I, what's, on your, what's on your mind this morning? Uh, well, I want to encourage everybody to come to the Corvette Show today. It's a great fundraiser to support St. Peter Claver. Uh, okay. And I hope everybody will come and check out all the beautiful Corvettes. All right. So just just to give us a little more information. So is, is this the, the show that's uh, here in, in, it's in Tampa? And from my understanding is correct, it's over in Ybor City. Am I correct on that? That's right. Okay. It's uh, 1731 East 7th Avenue. And if I come out to the show, what what am I gonna what can I expect to see? Um, you know, Corvettes. I assume are gonna be the feature, but are there gonna be other vehicles as well? No, I think just Corvettes. Just just Corvettes. And if uh, this is the event that's I think been being done in co conjunction with um, 
Uh, Mr. Marvin Knight, uh, local community activist, correct? Absolutely. Uh, Marvin calling. Knight, Joe Capitano, uh, Doug oh. Belden. Hey, are you dropping Warren names? Did you just <laughs> drop Joe Capitano's <laughs> name on me? You dropped. Listen, okay. <laughs> if you're in Tampa. I mean, I think everybody's required to show up now. Last thing we need is getting a call from Joe Capitano about us not coming out to the Corvette show in Ebor City. Uh, I know that Joe has been for years committed to education to young people in our community. Marvin Knight working with St. Peter Claver. Um, now, St. Peter Peter Claver is an inner city private Catholic school. Am I correct? Yes, it is. Okay, and uh, that school has been around for a very long time. Tell me some of the things that the, the funds from the Corvette show will go to do for the school, if, if you can, Colleen. Uh, that I don't know exactly. That would be a good question for Marvin Knight or Joe Capitano. They would be better versed in answering that. I just support St. Peter Claver, and I'm going to be there today. Okay. Um <clears throat> Let me ask you, are there going to be food trucks or vendors or anything of that nature associated with the with the event? Yes, that's my understanding. There should be food trucks. Uh, it's a free community event. Uh, there will be the opportunity to uh, register to vote. Uh, there will be different information on the various vendors who will be there. Um, I am running for circuit court judge. I will okay. be there and would love to meet everyone there. Okay. And I understand there's also a 50-50 raffle. Well, since I got you on the air, well, what group are you in? I am in group 30. So okay. it's a Hillsborough County wide race. Okay. Uh, open seat for Judge Martha Cook, who will be retiring in 2020. Okay. And uh, it's a nonpartisan race, as you know. So, well, let me and let me bring teach you a little bit about politicking. You're on the air. You've got thousands of people listening to you on the radio. Why should you, why would, should people select you, Colleen, for this particular seat to serve as judge? Uh, thank you. Great question, and I appreciate the opportunity. Oh, well, somebody's coached you how to respond already. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. Tell us about yourself. It's, yeah, so my name is Helene Daniel, and I have been a trial attorney in, in Hillsborough County for over 30-some years. Okay. And uh, I believe I am not only uh, extremely experienced, uh, not just as a trial attorney, but um, I've also been a circuit court uh, certified mediator for many years. And I think the two blend well to transition into serving on the bench. But I also believe I have the life experience required to have the appropriate temperament, the judicial demeanor um, to serve not just the law, but the public as well. Wow. Well, thank you very much for calling in. Thank you for uh, uh, sharing uh, that insight about your qualifications. But most of all, I want to thank you for being willing to serve. I believe we have one of the best circuits in the entire state of Florida because good people are willing to step forward and serve. So good luck with your campaign. Good and, and for anybody that's out there that's listening, um, um, uh, please feel free to go over to, to, to Ebor City. It's on 7th Avenue. It's a Corvette show. Listen, this is to support in any inner city uh, Catholic private school, school that struggles. To, I think almost I think it's a 100% scholarship-based school uh, where tons of kids are, are, are in need. And it's a great school, and I just want to encourage everyone to go out and support this event that's being put on by Marvin Knight. And she mentioned Joe Capitano. Everybody know the deal. You, know, you better show up. Or you, the last thing you need is a call from Joe. So good luck with the event. I hope I'll see you out there today, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Me too. Thank you so All much. Right. Bye-bye. Take care. Wow. So I don't I don't you know you're you're a Brooklyn native. So St. Peter Claver, for everybody who's listening out there around the country and across the state, is an inner city black uh Catholic school and uh school that, that you know just needs support and we try to give that support. I'm glad that she called and shouted this out. Uh being led by two great community activists, uh, Joe Capitano and Marvin Knight. Uh Teresa, if you don't know them, we gotta get you introduced because they're, they're people. I do that, know Marvin. I'm not oh, familiar no, with Joe. So. You need to know Joe. Everybody needs to know Joe. So uh all right, we're gonna take another the break. That's the boss giving me the finger saying I need to take a break. So we're going to take another break. We're going to come back and uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about Stand Your Ground. Oh, you know, yes. Florida is leading the country in developing that law. I know you're involved in, in, in that yourself. So we're going to talk about that a little bit when we come back. This is Intex News Radio. Reality Radio. with everybody.
can be a star. Even you, Esteban. Yes. <laughs> This is Trina Johnson with Caldwell Banker Real Estate, the real estate agent you've been looking for. If you want top dollar for your home or you're looking to make a purchase, call me at 813-244-6953. Again, 813-244-6953 and let me list your home. This is Linda Archie with Tyler Temple United Methodist Church. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month at the Village Market East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Free parking, free admission, fresh produce, live entertainment, vendor shopping, and delicious cooked food. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month, beginning June 22nd. For vendor information, call me, 1-888-991-2502. CRA in In Touch News or Florida Sentinel. Please call me at 1-888-991-2502. The Village Market at East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. What does that music mean, Esteban? Boom, that's what I'm talking about. Good morning. We're back live on In Touch News Radio. Reality Radio. But everybody can be a star. Now, what does that mean? Everybody can be a star. Well, it means you can participate in the show. It is a call-in show. The call-in number is 813-444-9588. 813-444-9588. Now, before you start typing and dialing, settle down. You know, just just hold on for just a minute and make just gather your thoughts, okay? And then give us a call, and we'll be glad to entertain whatever's on your mind this morning, whether it's local or national. I know a lot of people are concerned about the storm. Uh, and if you're watching on, on Facebook, you'll notice that sitting next to me, that is not Professor Tony Seabrook. That is attorney Teresa Jean-Pierre Coy. With the Jean-Pierre Coy Law Firm, you all specialize in uh, criminal and personal injury law. Um but there are a lot of people with the storm situation. I know it creates a lot of anxiety. The other night, I did some. I'm gonna give y'all my strategy. If you want to get gas, get up at two in the morning. Don't go at five in the afternoon. It stresses too high. So I set my alarm clock. I got up early in the morning. I went and gassed up all the cars. Came on back home. Nobody was at the Wawa. It was wide open. No if and nothing. Besides the guy that was panhandling. But everybody else, there's nobody else <laughs> around. I got my gas. I had no incidents. What's up? But I want everybody to make sure um, that that you prepare for the storm. And everybody is safe and, and, and that kind of stuff. So, all right, Teresa, let's talk about Florida in the stand. You know what? I, I Stand your ground law. And for those who are in, in states that you're not familiar with, it, I mean, Florida is leading the, leading the, I think leading the way. We have more cases. I can think of about three or four offhand. You know, of course, you have Trayvon Martin. Uh, we have the theater case. We have the park case. And then we have the convenience store case where a guy, uh, uh, you know, there, there's another situation. There. I think of the, the, the easiest way to, to try to explain Stand Your Ground is it, well, you started it. Is that a good way to put Stand Your Ground? Well, you started it. Well, no. So I have to, in order to fully explain this, and people throw around the term Stand Your Ground, where yeah. it's kind of like people say Obamacare, but it's really the Affordable Care Act. There really isn't a Oh, law. you want to be technical. I, I, do, I have to be technical. <laughs> I have to be technical. Okay. So, Give us a statute. So, then. so <laughs> it, it, it's really, it's it's the statute is, it's immunity from... <laughs> I'm a lawyer. So it's Florida Statute 776.032. Uh, and the actual you know title... Yes. Yeah, and she and, knows what she's talking and about. And the actual title is Immunity from Criminal Prosecution and Civil Action for Justifiable Use or Threatened Use of Force. So let me just clear something up first of all. And I'll talk about the recent case that I was on. The Drake case was not a stand your ground case. People, you know, when it first came out, people thought about stand your ground, and I'll tell you why. So essentially, what stand your ground is, but I just kind of gave you the actual technical term in yes. the statute. All it essentially means is that a person who is claiming self-defense that the sheriff's office, there's a statute that says that the sheriff's office, if they don't believe that there's probable cause, they may not arrest the person. All right? That, that's essentially what it means, which is what happened in the Drake case. Okay. Does that make sense so far? Absolutely. All right. And, and the reason why the sheriff 
is kind of hesitant to do that because the statute also says if they arrest somebody and that person later claims stand your ground, and I'm using the air quotes. As a defense. As, well, as a pretrial immunity hearing. To prosecution. Right. If they, if they actually file a motion, go to court. This is not trial. Go to court, have a hearing before the judge, and the judge grants it, or let's say the judge denies it. And then they can't be prosecuted? They, well, yes, they cannot be prosecuted, but then they can go after the sheriff and sue them for money. So that's, that's, the, that's why the sheriff is very hesitant in trying to, well, I'm just going to say was hesitant in the Drake case. I will tell you this, and this is just my own personal feeling. That's not how it's done for everybody. Right. I've I've personally represented people who I felt had valid stand your ground defenses who happened to be brown, black, whatever, and right. they did not get the luxury of the sheriff right. saying. So, so, so what you you know, so we, we assume a couple of facts that unless we have something, there's a thumb on the scale if you were disadvantaged. That's what I'll use. And I mean, disadvantage could be economic, Correct. it could be language. It could be cultural. It could be race. It could be gender. I just think that there's there's a thumb, and so what what when the defense comes in, you're trying to put equal weight and balance that and, and take away some of the things that have tilted it this way, so that we're now back to a balanced, just, fair process. The way I like to explain it is equilibrium. We like everything to be at an equal equilibrium. When one part is off, right. it messed the whole system up. But you know, going back into stand your ground. So, in in in, in any of, I mean, we got a phone call. We got a phone call. Got a let's phone let's call. do it. All right, go ahead, Esteban. Bring the. All right, Esteban, bring the caller in for us. Good morning, caller. Uh, state your name. Where you're calling from? Good morning, this is Carl. How uh, you guys are doing this morning? We're doing great, Carl. How are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous. Fabulous up here in um, Cranberry, PA. I got a little overcast. Not too bad. Okay. Okay. So um, so let, how how was your week this week, Carl? My week was pretty good. I, you know, uh, running here and there, uh, hour back and forth or whatever, cross country or whatever. Uh, it's been a lot of little wind or whatever, little draft here and there. Right. Some heavy traffic, road construction, you know, um, road rage here and there. You know, that uh, typical um, uh, disturbed uh, drivers. Okay, so all right, let's get into it because I, I got you right here. Out there driving okay. on the road, are you feeling the yeah. impact? Of Donald Trump's tariffs, are we? Is it impacting the goods going to and fro, Carl? Are you feeling it out there? Yes, well, well uh, uh, certain uh, certain times of the month, yes, you do because we get a lot of imports in from China, or whatever, and Korea, or whatever. The home goods and the TJ Maxx and the Marshalls or whatever. So the ship shipments are radical. Some of them come in at a big, uh, uh, come in um, at a heavy. And then they'll they'll go down for a while. Got so, it. Uh, okay, got it. Now I'm not hearing that on Fox News. I'm watching it every day. I'm waiting for them to report that uh, our commerce is starting to be impacted by that. But Fox won't report that. We'll leave that alone. Nobody complain. Don't report me to the FCC. <laughs> but all right, Carl, your boy Biden this week. He was stumbling and mumbling. He was stumbling. And he was he was stumbling and mumbling. And I got a deal. If he gets elected, I will pay for you to go to inauguration. But he was bumbling and mumbling. Ooh. I, what are what are your thoughts on this latest gaffe by Biden? Well, I, I don't think you know we, we do want our politicians to be um, uh, intellectual and be able to um, uh, to, to uh, uh, be able to uh, convey their message or whatever. But you know, if uh, I relate it as uh, if I someone tell me a story or whatever, and I go back and try to tell the story to someone else, I may miss the words of a miss the story up a little bit, but. Is there any truth in that story? Now we have a president that has has no has no recollection or even telling a lie when he does tell a lie, and it's proven by all your news news agencies, and then he can deny this. So I think Joe Biden is just, um, you know, he, he's he's a, a notch above what we have in office. Got a notch above. I would like to think he's a long way above. At least I know that I think his. Actions and things of that nature are genuine, maybe wrong or right. I just think they could, they're not manipulative or they're not uh, mean spirited. So, all right, Carl. So, so you heard me earlier. Hopefully, you're listening. I don't have Professor Tony Seabrook in studio. I've got with me Attorney Teresa Jean Pierre Coy from the Jean Pierre Coy Law Firm. She is very well versed on. I'm going to call it the Stand Your Ground Statute. Right. 
How about that? We, about that's, that? It, that's what people know about. Right, so right, right. So, Carl, I, 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 I don't. I'm not going to say that you get in involved in legal incidents where you need to know the law. But, but do you have a question regarding stand your ground for Attorney Jean Pierre Coy? Yes, I do. I, I, I had a previous incident about a few weeks ago. I just told you we didn't want to get into your <laughs> personal. We I'm didn't want to get your personal. <laughs> I just like told you we didn't want to get your personal business. But go ahead, Carl. What's on <laughs> your mind? Go ahead. I, you know, and I, you know, I had a, I had a Caucasian guy bump into me at a, at a truck stop. He bumped into me. And, like, I'm a pretty decent sized guy now, you know. But the guy something to me and <laughs> pushed me aside. Right. And I turned around, when I turned around, I seen a, I noticed that he had a 9 millimeter on his lip. <laughs> so if, if, if I had addressed the issue, what would have been my stance on that? Because, because he, he, you know, I saw that he touched me first. He bumped me first. So you, so I, I, I think you made the right call in that situation. And I'm glad I you're think, here with I us think, to tell the story. Yeah, I think nine millimeters trump bumps. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the components of the stand your ground is about being in fear, fear, correct? Right. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a subjective standard. So it's what the person, you know, essentially says that they were in fear or they felt like they needed to use. And it's not just deadly force. It could be non-deadly force as well. But that's one of the main components. And But the difference is it means that you do – it used to be that you had a duty to retreat. Unless you were in your home, which was the castle doctor. The castle doctor. Um, it just basically – it kind of took the castle doctor and put it out in the – into the regular outside the castle doctrine. So anywhere where you have a right to be, if you feel that you are in fear right. of um of, of isn't great a, bodily isn't harm, a reasonable fear though? Yeah, it is a reasonable it's fear. It's a reasonable fear. Right, exactly. It's a reasonable fear. Um then at that point you are allowed to use um deadly force or you know uh the threat of force to defend yourself. Right. But obviously Okay, it, okay now so the question would be this guy uh bumped it to me first. Right. So how would that be standing your ground if I uh, address the issue? How would that be standing your ground? But, but, but what, let, let me ask you, though. How would you have what, what way of, of addressing the issue you're talking about? Excuse okay, me. Now, is it excuse me, sir? Thing. You bumped into me. Right. Or is it, oh, let's get it on? No. Uh, hey, sir, uh, I, uh, was I in your way? Uh, what was I doing wrong? That type of thing. Or if I said something. And he put his gun out or whatever, you know, that type of thing. Could he claim stand your ground even though he beat up to me first? Oh, I see what he's saying. Well, because he b- initiated the contact. He it right. he could, and and if, it, if it starts to... Well, I think, you know, one, there there is a, a section, and this goes into self-defense. Okay. You can't be the initial aggressor and claim stand your ground. But there are some right. incidents. Okay, there yeah. are some. Okay. Let, me, let me give you a caveat. There are some incidents, though, where you can be the initial aggressor and still claim stand your ground. But it really goes on a fact by fact basis. So there are some some little caveats to that. But the, the, the bottom line is it's really a fact intensive type of inquiry that you need to make all the facts are different so you know it's hard for me in that scenario that you gave me to kind of tell you you know what would be staying your ground i would need i would have need to have known like what the end outcome would have been but it doesn't yeah. sound like anything happened yeah in yeah and I'm, I'm happy to know that you you were you, you held your temper and you, you were know. smart you saw yeah. the gun you let and it go i, I had to tell away. you this but i've seen you you're going to get bumped into again one day, so hopefully you'll be as, as reasonable the next time you oh get bumped God. into. Hey, man, listen, Carl, we always appreciate you listening. and Be safe out there, and, uh, hey, I, 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 I will talk to you soon. Uh, wow, that, that character there, man, he's all over the place. Es- will you give me the break signal, Esteban? I will. No, no, you will. Okay. It's all right. break time. Is it break time yet? All right. So so going back to talking about how this thing works. So you were involved in a recent case. Right. And it was billed as Stand Your Ground. Are you telling me that that was not really what that case was about? Yes and no. Okay. So you have to look at it. Now, which case? We're talking about the micro. Can we talk right. about the case openly? Now? Yeah. I mean, yeah. No. no I mean, that's, okay. Well, I mean, I'll tell you when, when I can't. All right. right then, but, good enough. I mean, right. just the basic facts were obviously, I mean, people touted it as the parking lot shooting case. and I first, call it the convenience store. The parking convenience camp. store or handicapped parking yeah. spot, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, bare facts were, you know, um, Mr. Draca walked around a car looking for a handicapped parking spot, got into a verbal altercation with the female who was sitting in the vehicle with her two children. Her fiance um, or boyfriend came out of the store, shoved Mr. Drake into the ground. He pulled out a firearm and shot him. 
and right. essentially and there's video and there's video absolutely. clear video clear. boom 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 yeah i okay. don't want to go into clear video but i'm not going to go into that <laughs> but there was video of the altercation and i yes. think depending on who you ask i think this was one of those cases that it really could have gone either way it really could have yeah. gone either I, way. I thought the thing that jumped out at me in this situation was the video right because oftentimes within legal cases we're trying to use multiple people, their versions and views to recreate what happened. Right. And in that, you get into the individual's credibility, their recall, and half-decent lawyer, I can make you doubt almost what anybody says on that stand. By, by I, I call it the, the, the question I ask. I love asking this question of married men. Y'all listen out there. Here's a question. What is your mother-in-law's birthday? Mm. Mm. And most of them like, oh, I don't know that. That's that feeling I'm going to give you on the stand. Right. It's something you should know, you really don't know, and boy, you're going to feel like you need to answer that right. to hold your credibility. But guess what? You just don't know. Right. And that's a struggle for a lot of people, recounting something that happened right in front of them. Right. But in this case, I thought that video, uh, and two videos, and I don't know how you got out of the second video. The second video was they videotaped him being interviewed by right. the officers right and so i thought those are two things that that it was hard to frame those differently because they speak for themselves well surprisingly there have been people who have watched both and people have come on either either side and I'm, the interview video i'm not going to focus on but the actual video of the shooting there are people who looked at it and said you know what i wouldn't have done that and there are people who looked at it and said you know what I would have done the exact same thing. So I think it was one of those cases where you really just, you know, it it, it, it went down the middle. I've had people stop me and talk to me from both from both ends. But right. in any event, and, and I will say this about that case, the reason why I think it came out as staying your ground, you have to put this in the context of when this all occurred. It's occurred during election year. Right. We throw right. out the word stand your ground. We've got so many people running for governor of the state of Florida. And obviously, you know, for African Americans in the community, when we hear stand your ground, we automatically think of Trayvon Martin. Correct. And the the biggest thing about this case was that Mr. Draco was not arrested. Right. You know, because as as a criminal defense attorney and a person who represents a lot of um, African-Americans, um, even for me, it was kind of an interesting, you know, an interesting the process decision. of how it played out. Right. right. Because exactly. I, I, I like I said before, I have clients who I felt could have justifiably just as well have claimed a stay in your ground yeah. and they were arrested. So but your role, your role in that was balance the scales, make the system work. Right. Um, right. And let's, let's let's hold that thought. We're going to come back. We're going to take another break. Uh, and come back and talk about the political implications of how this is affecting, I think, how people come into these cases and look at them because right. politics is running the day. You're listening to Touch News Radio, Reality Radio. We're about to start. We're going to take a quick break, pay some more bills, and we'll be right back. And I'm going to point at Esteban. Boom. How about that? <laughs> so, yeah, Carl's a mess, man. He's an overall truck driver. Yeah, well, yeah. And he's behind Biden. And he always calls in. And yeah, um, I wanted to get in with the same thing. thing. Is the the initial reaction was? I hey, this is Agent Wright, better known as Mr. Clean. You looking for some great barbecue? So Come see them two brothers in the grill, located in. at 423 like Virginia at Street, Charles and West Virginia. We got ribs, chicken, pulled pork, brisket, collard greens, mac and cheese, baby. Come get some and get you a nice smooth cigar. 304-550-4431. That is 304-550-4431. Come get some, baby. The rib man, mama, the rib man. Interesting case, like I, I just don't even. 
when it comes to reality radio, hey, everyone is a star. I'm just trying to do the job that I normally do, but I, I don't know. Why your life can do hey, that be? On your smooth hey, soul and R&B station. Uh, on the Worldwide Web. In Touch Radio. Esteban. All right, we're back live for the last segment. In Touch News Radio, Reality Radio, where everybody's a star. This is attorney Clint Paris, and guess what? I have another great attorney in studio with me. We have Teresa Jean Pierre Coy from the Jean Pierre Coy Law Firm, criminal defense attorney in Tampa, uh, fresh off a major trial that I think the whole nation was watching that trial. Was, there were reports on all over uh, media um, every uh, um, every week about that case. Um, so we have somebody calling in. Good morning, caller. You're on Intex News Radio, Reality Radio, where everybody's a star. Good morning. State your name, where you're calling from. Clint, it's Keith Harris. How are you doing today? Hey, hey man, I'm Keith. I'm doing even better now. I got Teresa sitting next to me, man. Hello, you, Keith. You made my morning. So uh, good Teresa, morning, Keith. How are you, how are you doing this morning? I am doing well, sir. Great to hear your voice. Yeah, for for a lot of you all who may not know, uh, uh, Keith and his his wife Monica are a great community uh, yes, people. Do a lot in our community, uh, a lot of stuff, and um, I appreciate you guys listening in this morning, Keith. And uh, I, I thought you 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 might uh, enjoy uh, having some comments with uh, Teresa this morning. I know you tracked what happened with that case, and yeah, you're your finger on the community. But what are your thoughts about that whole case, and um, kind of how the community responded to Teresa? Yeah, I, I, and I actually have two things I wanted to share. First, of, first of all, um, I wanted to uh, publicly affirm that um, that I have known Teresa for uh, uh, for many years, and I've seen her go through not just you know professional trials, but also personal trials in her life, uh, and as a mom and as a as a wife. Um, I, I just want to say that she is an outstanding person, and for what she went through um, after deciding to take on this case. Uh, the uh, the backlash from our community, I thought, was not just unfair, but just really, really undeserved. So, uh, so that's the first thing I just wanted to kind of put out there. Wow! Okay. Um, Thank you so much, Keith. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, no, no worries. And and I guess sec- the second part is that hopefully we kind of spice this thing up a little bit because I do want to talk about race uh, okay. as it relates to this uh, as it relates to this trial because I think it, you know I I decided to be okay with Teresa's decision. Um, to uh, to to uh, to get involved in this case, and the reason why is because I quickly um, I quickly came to understand it. I, I I believe that we made this case about race when, in fact, the little bit of details that I got about it was not that this individual had a problem with uh, with the victim's uh, race uh, in this case, but he had uh, he had a history of of kind of having some previous issues with confrontations with people um, over, you know, parking spaces and whatnot, and it had nothing to uh, had nothing to do with race. So, again, I get kind of back to my first point. I thought it was just unfair that here is a, a recognized criminal defense attorney who, who defends criminals. She defends right. Absolutely. people who have, been, who have been accused of things and, uh, and, and, and made a choice to take on this case, and all of right. a sudden we decided to make it about, and, and people use the term sellout, which I thought was just completely, <laughs> completely ignorant. So, that shocked anyway, me too, yeah. Keith. I, <laughs> I think that's a right of pay. Isn't that a, isn't that a requirement, though, that when you get involved in the community and do stuff, you're not really making stuff happen until at least you get one sellout accusation thrown at you? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a requ- I think that's like part of the, 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 the test questions. Oh, well. Is you get, you got to get one of those thrown at you. Um, but what was your, your, your take on, on that, uh, Teresa, when you first heard some of the backlash? What were your visceral responses to that? Well, you know, I, I, so let me just make this clear. I expected the African American community to feel the way they felt because of right. how this case was portrayed for the last year. And that's more of a media a political right. portrayal, and, and, and that's the racial piece. I think Keith is pointing out. Right, and 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 I and I was fine with that, and I actually, you know intended to and and i thank you for allowing me to come here i felt like this is a conversation that we needed to have to talk about how you know african americans and defense attorneys how we can defend everybody so i i com- i fully expected that from the community the part that shocked me the most okay. was just different attorneys who called me you know a sellout or, or whatever <laughs> they that was the part that really shocked me that really? and i'll be honest like i was really shocked about that and not so much that different attorneys i mean i would i expected from attorneys who probably didn't practice criminal defense or right but 
there was just a, a group of attorneys that actually were criminal defense attorneys that shocked me with calling me a Salah. So but, that was mainly yeah, the main okay. part that I had an issue with. I'm, I'm, I welcome the community, you know, um, having a problem with this, and, and I welcome talking to them about it and explaining it because what, what I've said before, and I'll say it all the time, me defending anybody really just helps anybody. African Americans in the long run. Right. It, it really does. Well, like, well, we have to have that system has got to be balanced. You've it has got to have a way, and only if you have people, and I say this all the time about all law enforcement, education, you need people of all sorts. This is the strength of diversity. Everyone everywhere holding everyone accountable in every way that you can you can you can facilitate that. Right. And you know, and one person I spoke to and, and he put it so clearly, he said, I didn't know that there was a litmus test for what types of cases that African American attorneys could take. And I thought yeah. that was just mm. so powerful. Right. Because I, I honestly I don't think there is a litmus test. Like yeah. we, we, we come, we are so diverse and, and, and different that I think we can all agree that we have differences, but also respect the fact that we're all doing our own thing. So, um, so that was really the only part about this case that kind of shocked me. But, um, with the community, I'm willing to talk to anybody at any time about okay. my role in this case and why I took it. And, right. um, you know, I would, like I said, if, 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 if anybody was mad about me taking this case, uh, you, you, you would have been mad. <laughs> about the cases I took that didn't make the national right, news. Right, well, so yeah, um, it, it was just an interesting, an interesting, um, an interesting experience for me. And like I said, it's not going to stop me. I mean, I'll, I'll get on any case. I don't right, care what right. the kind of, what, what type of crime Absolutely. it is. So. Any, any, any final, uh, any final comments, Keith? Hello, Keith, are you still there? Keith left. No, this is, this, this is the other half of oh. the plan. Hi, 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 Monica. Hello, Monica. Hi. L listen, hey Monica, did this have like yes. did this take you back to the whole uh, incident way back when we had those kids killed in the? Um, oh, oh my god! <laughs> and was that you went to that community meeting on my behalf? Right. Yeah, and, got, and, got, and, got, and got ripped and got ripped to spread on behalf of my of my. <laughs> I can't. Jennifer Porter, that was the oh, case. Oh, I remember that. But like I was telling, I was telling Teresa, until you get called a sellout, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not moving and shaking in this community. But, but Monica, I, I, I think that I think that's a rite of passage if you're a black attorney. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. But what were your thoughts, Monica? You saw this thing playing itself out. You've been active in our community as a lawyer and, and in a lot of other ways as a leader. What were your thoughts when you saw some of the community reaction to uh, Teresa uh, being involved with this case? So, so the community reaction, I kind of heard Teresa's response to your question um, about what her expectation was. And, you know, I think if you're not a lawyer, then, you know, certain times when you are representing uh, positions or representing clients who are not um, seen in the community as being the upright citizens or looked at as a bane of the community, then there's, there's, there's to be expected some backlash from, com from the community because they're not lawyers. Right. My, I took issue, and I had a problem with, and I was vocal about this on social media, with black lawyers and lawyers in the community um, attacking Teresa's reputation and saying that she was a sellout because in the legal community, you, have a, you should have an appreciation right. and recognize that at the end of the day, this is something we learned in law school, every defendant, whether you agree with them or not, is entitled to a defense. Right. Um, and they're entitled to an, an attorney that can um, competently and um, faithfully execute their services to defend them um, as long as they're not breaking, the, you know, as long as the attorney's, you know, act, living up to their professional responsibilities. Right. So the notion that Teresa, who, who I love dearly, um, I love the notion too, that Teresa, sis. who is a phenomenal attorney, would somehow be labeled a sellout by fellow black attorneys was troubling for me. I mean, again, I represent companies. Right. And so I'm sure that I've been called the man, representing the man and been called a sellout more times than I can count. But that doesn't mean that my clients don't deserve um, a zealous advocacy. Right. It doesn't mean that my clients don't deserve to have their day in court and don't deserve for my clients to, for me to push the best defense possible um, for my client. Um, and so, the community pushback, I think, as Teresa articulated, was probably to be expected because the community doesn't have an appreciation like lawyers do. Lawyers about what should. Our role is. Like the like oh, the should. lawyers should. Correct, should. Right. Right. What what our what our role is in the justice system. Right. Lawyers, right. however, 
absolutely have an appreciation for what our role is. And the black lawyer legal community is too small. Right, for right, us. right. It, it's way too small for us um, to take those type of pot shots or not come out. And even if you don't agree with the representation, have a have a have an intelligent conversation right. um, with community right. people in the community that explains what we as lawyers know is our job and responsibility. Absolutely, so, absolutely. So, so 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 I, so I called in for two things. One to say good, you know, I always Clint, you you continue to put on guests that you know, say, saying at the forefront of issues in the community, um, and applaud you for doing that. Well, and then two you. to just lend my public support beyond social media to Teresa um, and all the things that she's done in the community. And, and as I said, when she's representing black defendants, ain't nobody calling her a sellout. <laughs> well, can I, can I say something? One, so, I want to I want to thank you, Monica and Keith, for that. I appreciate it. But I would like to say this. It's the last thing. The Seminole Heights um, killer right. is an African-American young man. Correct. When he came out, um, he hired, some, uh, I believe it was Hispanic attorneys, and they had said they were trying to assemble a team together of lawyers. Right. I personally reached out to them and said I wanted to volunteer my services to help that right. young man. I wasn't taking up on it. Right. So um, right. I, I volunteer my services for black, white, like I said, anybody. Correct. I wasn't taking up on that particular case, but uh -huh. I volunteered my services pro bono. And I don't uh -huh. do it for everybody, so I don't want anybody calling me <laughs> trying to get pro bono cases. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> let's make that clear. Right. But um, I did volunteer for that young man as well. And I've represented other African Americans with right. any event so i appreciate the harris family for supporting me and you know for the black community and um i will continue to just keep doing what i wow. do well thank you monica for calling and appreciate it keith he got cut off before i could thank him i want to thank him too as well um and i appreciate you all supporting me and my what is this this little modicum of, of speaking out that we do here uh, i am also disappointed when i hear about people attacking someone else taking advantage of moments in social media i think it's overrated it's unnecessary it doesn't benefit our community i would like to think that everybody no matter where, no matter where you stand in the justice system your intent is to do the right thing and provide benefit to our community. Um, how much time? I'm, about, I'm out of time, Esteban. I know you're kind of looking jittery over there. Um, so, it hey, listen. It's a two-hour show. <laughs> it does need to be two hours. Uh, Teresa, want to thank you for coming in this thank morning. You for we appreciate me. your time. Um, anything that you want to say to the community uh, before we, we close out? No, I just want the community, you know, we can have a discussion. If you, we can disagree, we can agree to disagree, we can have a discussion. And if you want me to come out and talk to you and explain my whys and explain why what we do as especially African-American attorneys in the criminal justice system, why it helps us as a whole, I'm more than welcome to do that. Yeah, so. I mean, it, 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 it is a tough profession. I commend all lawyers who are willing to take on the responsibility for helping other people through difficult times, holding our community and our, our system accountable for what it says it wants to be. I didn't I didn't make up this system. Teresa didn't make up this system. Hey, somebody else made it up. We're just going to make it work the best way that we can. As always, I thank all of our listeners. I'll, I thank my callers, my watchers. I mean, listen, I'm telling you, I've got the face for radio. You can see it right there live <laughs> anytime. Please keep Teresa Jean-Pierre Coy in mind if you need a criminal attorney or looking for someone in personal injury. And the laws of Clinton Paris can't help you. Feel free to, to look her up. And always, we'll be back next week live here on Intech News Radio. Reality Radio, where you too, Esteban, can be a star.